The Canon EOS RP promises to be a budget full frame mirrorless camera that brings Canon's lens lineup to the masses. Let's unbox it today. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I'm a big fan of Canon cameras. I know they always kind of get beaten up whenever they release a new one, but I'm really excited to crack this one open. I do think there is promise in this camera despite what I've complained about and what the rest of the internet have complained about. So let's crack it open. I do want to thank my friends over at b &H Photo for sending this to me as a loner for purposes of making these series of videos. So thanks to b &H, and if you'd like to get your very own, there will be links in the description below. But that's enough talk to the box opening. I will say I did very much like the Canon EOS R and I very much liked the Canon 60 Mark II that I just checked out not that long ago. And this is kind of like a combination of the two. So, whew. Canon book, Canon definitely always gives you a book. Uh, they give you literature, promoting literacy. I do really appreciate that. You get a battery charger, which you think that would be a, you think that would be a tough hurdle to fall, stumble over, but uh, you know that's something that Sony and their infinite wisdom can never seem to get right. We got the battery, which okay. One of the negatives about the camera is you get this. For a full frame camera, this is a teeny battery. Like this is the kind of battery that I expect on like, I don't own it anymore, but when I had an M50, this is like an M50 size battery. What is this even? What is this? This is a, it's an LPE 17. I'm not sure the exact milliamp hours on it. It says 7.5 watt hours. I don't know, but tiny battery for a full frame mirrorless camera. And something else that I, something that I don't like uh, about what Canon's been doing since their R line is they got really cheap like packaging. Like give give me some pizzazz for this packaging, right? I did get the kit with the 25 to 104 lens because the, I think RF lenses are the future for Canon. I mean, they are some of the coolest. They've got some of the coolest lens tech out there. So you get the little, you get the little lens case. Gotta have a little lens case. Lens hood. And the thing that I never use, but I always ask you guys, do you guys use the straps included with the kit? Now I ask this all of the time and I will continue to do this. If you use the strap that comes with the camera kit, leave a comment below, I wanna know. That is everything for right there. Let's pop out, ooh. This is a very good kit lens. Now I do say like the kit lens on the Nikon Z6 is my favorite kit lens of all time because I do not consider this 24 to 105 to be like a traditional kit lens. This is a 24 to 105 L series lens. Now, if you don't speak Canon, that's top of the line. That's Canon speak for top of the line. And uh, darn it if this is not a top of the line lens. I mean, it's big, it's heavy, it's beautiful. It has a very nice image. It is image stabilized, which is awesome. And I can't wait to throw this on the camera. I do already have an, uh, from my time trying out the USR, I did buy one of the RF to EF adapters. So we're gonna try this out in a second with the 50 millimeter. 1.8 and look at that's all that comes in the box that's pretty that's pretty anemic but this that's welcome to the everyday dad if you haven't seen me drop a camera you haven't been here long enough Ooh, -hoo. that is small and that is light now something that i'm a big fan of is small light kit that just works and dang it that feels good Something I did not like about the EOS R was there was a multifunction button here. I'm very happy to see that gone. Ooh, are we gonna get, oh, and we've got a mini, we've got a mini HDMI out. That is awesome here. Let's get some light on there. We've got a mini HDMI out. So if you don't know, like a lot of cameras have micro HDMI, which is that teeny tiny little HDMI that falls out of the timer, it puts stress on the port. I really like that they put micro HDMI, or I really like that they put mini HDMI in here. It's just like the connection on the Z6, which is filming us overhead right now. Looks like it does have mic and headphone. Woo, look at that. Well, okay, so something else that I already like about the EOS R better is that the EOS R, when it's turned off, it has like a little like plastic cover, like the shutter closes over the, the sensor, which I do really like. You don't think about that until you start making videos about cameras and dust gets everywhere. So having extra protection is really nice. Man, this feels good. I mean, it doesn't feel EOS R good, but it kind of feels like M50 good. Like it's a plastic body with a grip like all in the right places. Buttons feel good. I like the mode dial, which was something that was sorely missing on the, uh, the EOS R. It's got that, got that, got the record button. That's not in a terrible spot. 
All of this feels really good. We got the most important of specs, the flip screen, right? That's what all of us YouTubers care about. That's a very true statement. It's very important. I say that in jest as a YouTuber. I don't like that this is not rotating, so that kind of stinks, but all the buttons feel good. It, it feels really light. Let's pop in this battery and see if we got any juice. With the battery, that's crazy light on. Oh, we do have a little bit of battery life. So today is March 1st. We don't, we won't worry about the time. So no card and camera. I will say I do just, oh, the battery's just about dead. So we'll, we'll charge it up here in just a second. But I do really like the, uh, I do really, really like the menu system on a Canon camera. So uh, we just lost the battery. So we're good. also in 1080p. They don't have 24 frames per second as a 30 frames per second shooter. That's not that big of a deal for me personally, uh, but I could see how that could be an issue. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna charge the battery a little bit. We're gonna play around with the settings and then we're gonna do a quick indoor test to see how the image quality looks. So like right now we're on a GH5 recording in 4K with the 25 millimeter 1.7 lens. Uh, once we're done charging this, we'll try this out with an EF 50 millimeter 1.8, see how it looks. So magic of editing. Okay, so full disclosure, I was only able to make it about 15 minutes, so we're not gonna have long to mess around with this menu system and do a quick video test, but we're gonna do it anyway because that's what matters most. Oh, while we have this open, let's pop in the SD card. Ooh, I'm also not liking that the SD card goes where the battery is. That's never a big, that's never a big design thing that I'm a fan of, but you know, little things, we'll try it out. So let's pop on the RF. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man, okay, that makes this that makes this little camera be a whole lot bigger. But I do really like the Canon RF glass. Um, like I said, it's fantastic. It's an L series uh, lens. It's got the control ring on it. It's got the focus. It's got the zoom. Oh, I'm so excited! It's got stabilization, autofocus. I am really excited to to give this a shot. But let's turn it on. Now that we got a few moments of battery life, uh, at least I know there's a few questions that people have had about recording so it looks like it does IPB full HD so no all I unfortunately I'm light so it does IPB light and IPB regular which is probably probably pretty rough but yeah 4k 2398 uh, full HD 5994 that's that's disappointing I do wish it had at least 4k 30 um, but you know that's not that's not who this camera is for unfortunately so got the digital is and this this has something new like this and the usr have something new where it's digital is but it's like canon's new kind of stabilization uh we'll talk more about that in the future but it should be it should be really good stuff we got auto white balance hdmi info display picture style auto auto white balance touch and drag lens electronic we still got the normal touch to focus yep 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 five 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 <sighs> 5.6 we need that to be as wide open as possible right that's the whole reason you get a full frame camera is to shoot as wide open as possible okay what else we got it does look like we can see the audio from the front but we'll try that again that was one of the things that i did not like about the m50 was that you couldn't see the audio from the front uh volume okay there we can see that so at the very least you could see that from there sound recording definitely never have sound recording on auto so let's drag this all the way down because we're gonna switch this camera out from the gh5 that we're currently recording on here in just a second okay so we got all that good we got it all good we still have oh there and you can see the audio recording that is so useful like i cannot overstate like i love the m50 it's a great budget camera but not being able to monitor your audio while you're in front of the camera is a huge, huge negative. And I really like that you can do this from here. So what we're gonna do, hold on, let's find the adapter real quick. Okay, we got the adapter, we got the Canon 50mm 1.8 because if you're gonna shoot a full frame camera, you might as well do it wide open and as shallow a depth as field as possible, especially if we're gonna do this indoors. So let's put this on here. Now one of the benefits of these new mirrorless cameras like the Z6 and the EOS R and the EOS RP is that the the adapted glass especially if it's a native adaptive glass is darn near as good as like a native lens but what we're gonna do now we're gonna swap this out see how it looks instead of the gh5 so <laughs> okay and now we are on the canon eos rp man i just love using canon cameras they're just some of the most 
easy to use. It just, it didn't take me very long to set it up at all. So we're currently, I know earlier we said we were gonna be on the Faithful profile, but I figured to make it as fair as possible, we are on the Standard profile. We are currently at f1.8 with the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens and the adapter. Uh, we're at 60 shutter speed, we're at, well I already said 1.8 lame we're on auto iso and i can see everything i can see the audio i can see the recording i can see every oh man i just like it we do have dual pixel autofocus in 1080p 30 which is what we're using right now this big honking lens we're gonna try this out here in a little bit too but yeah this is the indoor studio test just like we saw a second ago with the gh5 everything's still the exact same the lighting's the same everything else is the same so I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Uh, I do. We did a video a few weeks ago on the 60 Mark II, which I didn't think was too bad. Expensive, especially for what you get in 2019, but I didn't think it was too bad. This is like a much smaller, compact, cheaper version of that. And I think this camera is really for people that want to get into the RF lenses because these lenses are some of the hottest, most cutting edge lens technology you're gonna find. Now I like the Z lenses, I like the Z6, it's one of my favorite cameras of all time. But I feel that like Canon is doing more with the lens department, so this could be a really great way to get into that. And I'm really excited to try it out. And I like that control ring. Mmm, mmm. So what we're gonna do now, we are just about done on the battery here, uh, cause I couldn't wait to charge it up as you just heard. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna charge the battery some more and then when it's more charged, we're gonna hop outside and do a quick like vlogging walk around the yard test, see how this would work. If you are somebody that just needs a camera to look at and get some recording done, is this worth it? We're gonna find out here in a second. It's a Canon camera, so it probably will be. Okay, I'll see you out there. <laughs> okay, so welcome to the outside test of the Canon EOS RP. Now we are on the 24 to 105 kit lens. We're at f4 with auto ISO on. We're in manual movie mode. I was going to shoot this in HDR, but I found out if you decide to shoot it in HDR, you don't get access to what frame rate you want and you cannot control the, uh, the shutter speed or the ISO, at least through this initial test. So this is just kind of like an outdoor test. Uh, let's try out some, some light vlogging, light, like light yogging, yogging, vlogging. Some light vlogging. Now, as we wander around, something that I've been talking about that I really need in my, you know, in my cameras is not necessarily, you know, I know I autofocus is kind of like the new hotness that everybody uses, right? Sony uses it, Fuji uses it, Nikon's about to use it, but what I need is sunglass autofocus. And I can see that the box is around my face. It seems to be working pretty well. And actually the image from the screen that I'm seeing right now looks pretty good. And inside when we were doing the Canon EF 50 millimeter 1.8, I thought that image quality looked pretty darn good too. The big negatives, the big negatives that I've seen so far, small battery, and it's got that, it just doesn't have 24 frames per second in 1080p. Now, I don't use 24 frames per second, but if you do, that's like, that's such a disappointing thing. Hopefully, like that's an oversight that they can add in the future because that like breaks my heart. Like, just because this could be such a great camera because it's so small, it's so light, I'm actually just in the, what, the 50 minutes, the one hour that I've been playing with it so far, I actually, I'm surprised at how much I like this darn thing. And something, here's a, here's a quick thing while I've got you guys here. Uh, people are like, why do you always do the vlogging test? Well, here's why we do the vlogging test. It's a really quick way to test stabilization, autofocus, image quality, usability. It's like a two minute, well, this one's gonna be a little longer because we're explaining this. It's like a two minute way to show how a camera can work for like anybody. So that's why I always do the vlogging test. I'm not a vlogger. I'm not only reaching out to vloggers, but I think it's just a quick way to, to try everything out. So this has been the image quality. This has been the unboxing. This has been my initial and very initial like one hour impressions of the Canon EOS RP. What do you guys want to see out of this camera? I've got it for another couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to be making a series of videos on it, comparing it against my favorite cameras. Uh, so let me know what you guys want in the comments below. And I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.